All right, so we're taping. I've spent the last five years in Olympia since I came here from North Carolina, um, finishing up school at Evergreen State College and organizing uh, other students and organizing in the community as well um, around anti-militarism issues, around police brutality issues. Um, I worked with Port Militarization Resistance in 2007 and 8, uh, Tacoma and Olympia Ports. Um, I started, helped start and coordinate SWO Info Shop, a radical lending library at Evergreen State College, and I formed a hip hop group called uh, Thought Crime Collective with four or five other people. Um, recently, I've been organizing around homelessness advocacy issues and low, issues uh, around low income situations uh, on the street because I recently uh, was almost illegally evicted from my house uh, for my beliefs, actually. Um, that was what was used as the pretext. Um, so what do you mean organizing? Organizing, I mean uh, organizing low-income folks to assert their rights and to oppose uh, unjust laws, what we see as unjust laws. I recruit the group so you got civil. them to... Uh, to protest, go out in the streets? Go out in the streets and uh, protest, uh, essentially busk and break the new panhandling ordinance. That and when you say busking, in. that's street performance. That's huh? street performance, yes. More, uh, more music, less laws, that's how we like to look at it. Uh, right. I work with civil citizens in violation of illegal laws. And, uh, and so I've been uh, especially interested in trying to scale back the no, the amount of anti-poverty legislation locally that's been getting passed um, and reversing that um, trend within local city government. Um, also trying to enlist the help of friendly biz local businesses that uh, understand you can't criminalize panhandling and criminalize busking at the same time. You need to offer an alternative, um, especially one that produces and helps produces culture on the streets and helps maintain uh, you know healthy vitality. Well people have to have some way to live huh? Yes and I'm definitely not going to be in support of anyone who so tell me a little bit uses about the police to harass poor people tell, who are tell just me, trying to make an honest living. Tell me a little bit about civil what's what's the point of that? Civil is, uh, like I said, we're organizing. Um, we also try to revitalize the cop watch downtown and get more, uh, more of the street community involved with uh, knowing their rights, asserting their rights, and understanding how to deal with cops. And so civil does community. what? Uh, well, that's the whole thing. We've done a few protests, buskins, um, tried to be essentially uh, also a, a network of support and solidarity uh, and outreach, um, kind of in the way that Iggy Hop right now operates downtown. Yeah, except civil is, is, is civil disobedience, isn't it? Make more of like a visible presence. Yeah, but it's it, that's just uh, one of the tactics of many that we're Oh, uh, I using. see. We're also going to be trying to get a referendum to expand the busking zones. And like I said, try to expand the busking zones through business permits uh, for all the friendly businesses uh, that would like to expand the busking zone. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been doing most recently. Um, and uh, I always kind of expected, you know, sticking my neck out, being an activist, being an organizer, being a musician, um, that I would be under surveillance. But uh, recently, court documents, uh, communications received, uh, that we received, uh, me and Drew Hendricks, through the Freedom of Information Act requests um, about me uh, revealed that ever since the Capitol protests, at least, the uh, Olympia Capitol occupation um, in April, uh, that the police, Washington State Patrol and Olympia Police Department um, had a scary amount of knowledge of me, where what, I why lived, you... why, uh, where I'd be going to protest, even in California, when I went to California to support the social services. Um, uh, well, why did you think strike. to make this Freedom of Information request? It was actually done, it was, it was, Drew was just doing a blanket request in general. Drew pretty much does Freedom of Information Act requests on almost every protest that happens, uh, just to understand um, and better analyze, you know, what worked, what didn't work, you know, how we can go through and also to notice patterns because there's a history of Olympia Police Department, Washington State Patrol, even the military 
um, not to mention other agencies, other law enforcement agencies, uh, you know, infiltrating our groups. Uh, John Towery infiltrated the Port Militarization Resistance Movement and also uh, surveilling other activists like Phil Chin and Brendan um, McLaughlin Dunn um, were all revealed to have been under heavy surveillance by a number of different agencies. So I'm not new, and it's not a new phenomenon at all. It happens to anyone who gets loud enough and is uncompromising enough with the whole, you know, being bullied into silence thing, and I won't do that, you know. I've, I've been framed by the police in the past, and I still am organizing, and I'm still having my voice heard, and I think that that has infuriated them, and they're pretty much fed up with it. They knew, they, the FOIA requests revealed that they knew the make, model, year, my car, uh, like I said, they knew where I lived, they knew through uh, monitoring my Facebook, which they admitted, which protests I'd be going to show up there and monitor my activity and record it. Um, and using a number of pretexts to uh, harass me for pedestrian interference, um, which is standing literally in one place for more than 10 minutes on the sidewalk. Wow. Um, and then within five minutes, Washington State Patrol pulled me over. Um, I think a total of four times they, the Washington State Patrol pulled me over and gave me the same driving without insurance ticket, each time with a different pretext. The first one was, your muffler's too loud. The second one was, uh, he lied and said that my, um, one of the Washington State Patrol officers lied and said that he couldn't see any working lights in the front of my car. So they have to have some reason to pull you over. They have and some reason, but they never use that as the reason that they never give once, you a ticket for that. once they've got you over, they can get you for the uh, lack of yes. insurance, which is what what they know already about you. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Or they what they thought they knew because it stopped as soon as the I, I had a, my most recent uh, engagement with Washington State Patrol when I still had a car uh, before I just recently sold it, was uh, was two plate, this is a two plate state. That's what he had the gall to say to me. This, It was pretty ridiculous. I've never heard that before ever. I'm sure, you know, it just means that they're, they're kind of scraping the barrel for a pretext, you know. Uh -huh. They've said my muffler's too loud. They've said that my, my lights don't work, which is a total lie. Well, the officer stood in front of my car, I turned on the lights, the lights came on and he, he looked me in the eye and said, nope, I don't see any lights. And then he said, but I'm going to let you off easy. Here's just a $550, uh, you know, no one driving without insurance uh, ticket. And, uh, and it's just been, it's been, made it really hard. The harassment, the intimidation, I think 12 police encounters in two months, six different tickets. Um, they're trying to inundate me with court appearances and essentially make it as hard for me to uh, organize and to engage in activism on the streets of Olympia as, as possible and I really uh, don't appreciate it and uh, I hope that we can all come together and, and uh, I hope that this program helps people realize that it's a widespread problem, it's not just a single issue.